Welcome to the marriage, the overt marriage, I should really say, between the government and the private central bank. Janet Yellen has not quite been sworn in yet, but she probably will be. That's going to mean a lot for a lot of, well, really for the global economy. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about coming up. Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer. We want you to have this real money in your possession, and it's getting more and more urgent. I'm going to show you what's been going on. I mean, we do know that a lot of people out there, Main Street, did get like a little taste of the huge stimulus package that obviously most of it went to Wall Street. But many of you or many people have gotten that $600 stimulus check, but of course that the lower income people really do need to use it to pay their monthly bills, to buy food, to do those kinds of things with. But 600 bucks doesn't even cover a month's worth of bills. So, and a bank at bankrate.com, they found that only 39% of the people canvas could comfortably cover a surprise $1,000 expense out of their savings. And we've seen a lot of surveys that have been much lower than that. 40% of the people could not come up with $400 for an emergency. And I think this whole past year, 2020, was pretty much of a big, huge emergency. But there is help coming for Main Street. We're going to talk more about this uh, going forward. But 2021, there are lots of UBI, universal basic income, that is being tested in cities all around the country. And part of that, UBI, I mean, it sounds good. Everybody should have a basic income without means testing, though that's not really how some of these experiments are going. They're really targeting the lowest income tier, which probably they should be. However, right now it's being funded by billionaires like, like Elon Musk and like uh, Zuck Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, because they know that the technology and the artificial intelligence will be eliminating a lot of currently low paying jobs. And they also know, and so does the government, knows that after a pandemic, like we're still in the midst of, that public discontent rises. So they're going to have to do something about it. So, you know, I probably did jump the gun, quite honestly, but UBI is on its way. How that will be funded, you know, I got to say, Debt levels are through the roof, as we know. We're going to look at that more. But, you know, the reality is that we're about to get, that was just, I think, looking like chump change to what we're going to get now that it's pretty clear that the government is hand in hand with the private central bank. Janet Yellen now will have held both positions. She was the chair of the Fed after Bernanke and now as Treasury Secretary. I'm pretty sure she has a lot of friends in high places. So here, at her confirmation hearing, what does she say? We should act big because what we've done apparently is not enough. Wall Street heads higher after Janet Yellen says we should act big. Now, some are saying that she's just talking about the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill that President Biden is going to usher in, but I think it'll be much bigger than that. And look at Wall Street's response. 
I mean, I've shown you these Giardini charts many times where the blue line is the central bank balance sheet and the red line is the S&P 500. And it's been pretty obvious going back to 2008 that they were pretty congruent, but now they're like 100% congruent. Why? Because so much of that new money, what, what do central banks know? Central banks lend and governments spend. So now that this is an over marriage, you can expect a lot of big spending and maybe finally they'll actually do some infrastructure work. We've been talking about that, I think pretty much as long as I can remember. I don't mean a few years, I'm 66. I think they've been talking about that forever. Somehow it just never manages to manifest, but maybe now it will. However, the chances are pretty good that the haves, Wall Street, the billionaires, the going into trillionaires will actually benefit much more than Main Street. I hope that's not true, but the likelihood of it is pretty clear. And what does all this money printing mean? Now, remember, the Fed has touted that they did all that QE in 2008, and yet they could not hit their 2% inflation target. Well, look at this. This graph goes all the way back to 1875. And what the central banks did, this is the M2 money supply, which is not the broadest base of money supply, mind you, because they took that away from us in 2006. But it, it is at the highest level ever going back to 1875. You think this is really not going to have any inflationary pressure? I mean, seriously, have you looked at your food bill lately? Have you looked at any of your bills? Are they really as low as they were in 2008? That's so long ago, you probably can't even remember. But that's the truth. And we are experiencing greater inflation even now because this time, the money created by the central banks, last time it just went into bank reserves and into Wall Street. So the inflation was held in the stock market and the bond market and the real estate market, all of which were targeted for reflation. When you hear that reflation trade, that means that they want inflation in those areas and they were very successful at it but they couldn't have gotten away with what they did in 2008. So this time, more stimulus, and I'm gonna show you this in a little bit, but more stimulus did go into the hands of the spenders. And keep in mind, we are a consumer-driven economy. And the consumers, most of Main Street, have been having one heck of a time consume, consuming. But this is the official inflation, CPI. And look at where it is. And this is from 2008. So to say that they haven't been able to hit their target is ridiculous. Anybody that shops and pays attention, and I did something on this not that long ago, showing that state by state, the average inflation, with annual inflation was really closer to eight and 10%, not that 2% but they have been warning us that they're going to allow it to run hotter. So when it goes above that 2% target, then they get to say, well, don't worry about it because we're doing an average and we expected this. I told you when they came out with that announcement and I'll tell you today, it's just a justification, but most of Main Street will feel the worst impact of this inflation, just like they are now. And all of this debt, all of this money printing, has it actually stimulated the real economy? Because this is the monetary velocity chart, again, since 2008. And remember I said, I'm gonna show you these blips. So this was cash for clunkers, right? And the little, $600 stimulus check, so we got a blip up. 
Now, we've got a blip up here, and I want to point this out. Because if you never, ever go to any other charts or graphs, this money velocity chart would be the one to pay attention to. I cannot tell. So all of this created, oh, just this little bit of this. Velocity of money is the number of times that money changes hands. So if I'm feeling comfortable in my income, then I'm more likely to go out and spend. If I'm nervous about my income, then I am more likely to save, right? So what you're looking at here is that people are not comfortable with their incomes. And of course, that started the level of debt that individuals, governments, corporations have to service has grown so much. That's why they have to anchor the interest rates at zero so that they can afford to roll that debt over because we're going to look at that in just a second because they want us to think that it doesn't matter. But, you know, all of this has not been particularly stimulating, but you watch for this to go up in a pervasive way. Went up here, not as fast, but it was not pervasive. And so we got this. And you can see that it was downturning even before the crisis hit. Now we've got a pretty sharp upturn. What's going to kick it out of the park? Because this graph is going to tell you that the hyperinflation has begun. That's why it's so important. So you've got the links on the blog. If you only grab one link, grab it to that and go back and you can sign up. They'll automatically send it to you every time they uh, post the numbers. And that would be the one to watch to give you a heads up before the hyperinflation begins. But they do want us to believe that debts and deficits don't matter. Well, look, do you really see debts cutting back at all, right? This is the total public debt. There are even more places for debt. But you see that? No, what you see is every single time they hit a recession, that the speed at which debt is taken on grows even faster. And it is now exponential straight up. And we have the promise to go big. Okay. Okay. Well, here are the deficits, right? This is 2008 deficit, and that was bad enough. We're already down at 3 point, almost 3.2, so 3.13 uh, trillion in deficit spending and going big when globally the economies are not robust. I don't care what they say. They're not robust. I mean, I don't know. How long can this actually go on? It can actually go on until either all confidence in the currency and the system is lost or when the central banks determine that it's too expensive to keep doing it. Because as much as they've done, every time they do more, it has less and less impact. I mean, you can see it. Let me just go back for just a second here. Okay, you can see it in the velocity of money. Less and less impact. It used to be that taking on debt actually did stimulate the economy. And that would be true even for an individual. As long as your income can keep up with the debt and the payments that you're taking on, yeah, you can buy stuff before you even earn that money. But what happens when your income cannot keep up? Well, you can keep rolling over and just paying the minimum on the credit card so you can keep it going for a while. But when you have compounding interest like we do here, and like, unfortunately, people with credit cards typically do, you make that minimum payment. You're not paying all the interest. And so then that balance of that interest goes on to your principal. So even if you stop spending, your debt continues to grow because you are now compounding interest. And when you see a deficit, what that means really simply is that the government is spending a whole lot more than they're taking in. I just, you know, I think it, it it's like really important to see how dramatic that is with a promise to do even more 
and go even bigger. What you're looking at here is the federal debt as a percentage of gross domestic product. So we're already at 127.3%. That's your debt. We've got 120, more than all the income that we have by 27.3%. It could go on longer than you would realize because the Fed is buying so much government debt. And really what we've been experiencing is a soft form of MMT. At some point, they're going to have to let that go. And, and I want to talk more about that in a minute. But this is GDP for 2020 from a change earlier. Now, China is a little bit more than 2%, but they've got debt issues. They've got issues of their own. They are not clean in this. Here's the U.S., right? Here's the average world. So deficits to the moon, well, you know, until confidence is lost, as long as others will accept your debt, etc. But here we are. This is from today's, while I was working on this, this came up in my feed from the IMF, International Monetary Fund, which is, com which is made up of 189 countries, central banks, and treasurer, and secretary of the treasury, right? And this is uncertainty in the world. And from this blog, Although uncertainty has come down by about 60% from the peak, right? This goes back to 1996. Uh, at the onset of COVID-19 pandemic in the first quarter of 2020, it remains about 50% above its historical average. And what I really want to point out, and I should have written this in here, but this is 2007 and earlier, 96 to 2007. And you can see that most of it, other than the U.S. recession and 9-11, Iraqi war and outbreak of SARS, have been below that line. But ever since the financial crisis in 2008, you've been pretty much above that line. So if there is complete uncertainty in the world, what do you think a shock is going to do? And after all, you guys, I have just gone through the um, financial stability report from the Fed. And we can see all of the uncertainties and the fact that the banks can't even handle one shock. Although, hey, they rated really well on their, on their tests in June. Yeah, great. And they can pay out. A lot of them can pay out dividends and and um, do stock buybacks again. Woohoo! Because they're so safe. Not according to that report. And when uncertainty reigns, you want to go to a flight to safety. Now, what I'm showing you here is spot. What I really want you to understand is that spot is a contract. Now, they've been talking about, and I'm going to do more on this too, because a thought occurred to me this morning. I don't know why it took me so long to think of this, but it did. And I said to myself, because I was listening to CNBC, and I was listening to them talk about, you know, how you're not really hearing very much about gold anymore because it's all going to Bitcoin. Well, I never tell you to buy gold because gold's going up because Wall Street determines whether or not it's going up or down. You need to have physical gold, physical silver, and some fiat cash outside of these markets because we are going through a reset. Now, I'm going to be doing something more on it because I pulled the data. I just have to kind of put it together on central bank digital currencies. And I want you to think about this for a minute because gold gave the public a way to hold the government's toes to the fire and central bankers too. I mean, if you didn't like what they were doing, you simply took your Federal Reserve notes and converted them into $20 gold coins. And they were allowed 
to run together between 1913 and 1933. So 20 years they were allowed to go together as they were putting everything into position. What do the central banks want? They want a completely digital system. That's what they want. So Bitcoin came out in March of 2009 when they started the QE. But are they going to reset the financial system, the monetary system against Bitcoin? No, they're not buying Bitcoin. What are they doing? They are ferociously approaching central bank digital currencies. Now, in the flower, they'll probably let them run simultaneously for a while. But at the bottom line, this is why you need gold, because that is how the reset is done. They're not going to reset the currency against Bitcoin. They're going to reset the currency against gold. That's how they do it, because this has real tangible value having use across the entire global economy. So I'm not saying don't buy it, but understand that what you're buying is a Wall Street contrivance. You are not buying a true monetary asset. So if you do, great. I mean, it's certainly going up. It's certainly gathering a lot of attention. And Wall Street is certainly participating and creating some level of a floor underneath it right now. But I would say the same thing that I would say in your stock and your bond portfolio. Make sure you're properly diversified and you have that gold to cover any intangible assets. And not because Wall Street says it's worth more or it has a lot of room to run. I mean, it's cheap and it's easy to manipulate the visible price of gold. But at the end of the day, this is all about the reset. And they don't and they won't be resetting the currency against a private cryptocurrency. They're going to be resetting it against physical gold, just like they always have over 4,800 times. And as a very wise, for a minute anyway, past Fed chair stated before he became Fed chair, in the absence of the gold standard, there is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. There is no safe store of value. That was true when he said it back in the 60s. And it's true today. And if we go big enough, or even if we don't, all this new money that's sloshing around in the system, we will be getting UBI. We're going to have to get UBI. And when people feel comfortable that they're going to have that, I've heard 2,000, I've heard 4,000, I've heard 500. Whatever that number is going to be. When people feel comfortable enough that every month they're going to have those digital dollars deposited in their Fed Now accounts and they can go out and spend them, they will. So make sure you pay attention to that monetary velocity chart to give you an indication of when the hyperinflation has begun. But you should not be waiting to see if the current turn up is pervasive. You need to get everything in place today. Food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. That's my personal mantra. The gold and the silver take care of the universal barterability as well as the wealth preservation. They need to be the foundation of every single person's portfolio. That's your wealth insurance. So can I have the reminders? Yes. This week, um, aren't I with George this week? Yes, I am. The Rebel Capitalist Show with George Gammon on Friday. And we're going to do it regular, the regular way um, with uh, Zoom or Skype. Next week, I'm going to be back on with Patrick 
on Silver Bullion TV. And before I get with George on Friday, I probably will have some, we're gonna have a lot to talk about. And that's always a great and important conversation. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, just send them in to questions at itmtrading.com and, um, or you can even ask if you're working with one of our consultants and you have a question, you can ask them the question and they'll pass it through. So until next we meet, keep in mind that it is absolutely critical that you protect your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we use the Wealth Shield. And we're working really hard on creating the materials that'll help you understand it, but it's simple. It really is. If you just talk to our consultants, they'll explain it. But just keep in mind that shields that actually work are made of metal. Definitely not paper, certainly not promises. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.